Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Dragon Ball Fighters, even a shooter like Borderlands share an interesting quirk with their health bars. Yes, I'm talking about the damage indicator, often appearing as a red or white underlying bar. It shows the player just how much damage is being done in a quick succession and quickly disappears once the combo ends. It's a fun mechanic that adds a lot of much needed feedback and I'll show you how to easily do it in Godot. Let's Godot! The way we will implement this health bar is by having two progress bar nodes stacked on top of each other. The top one will indicate health and will immediately adjust when the health changes. The bottom one will be the damage indicator and will change only after a delay. The delay will be done with a timer that will be reset every time health is reduced. Let's go ahead and create a new scene, call it health bar and choose the root type of progress bar. Click on the health bar and let's set up some things in the inspector. Disable show percentage. Type in some value that is less than 100 and this is just so we can see the bar in the inspector and it will not matter for the game. Under layout and transform, I'm just gonna set a size that I like, which is going to be 240 by 4. Now we can see our bar and it's time to style the colors of it. So expand theme overrides and styles and here we have options for a background style and a fill style. For the background we're gonna choose the style box empty because we don't want to cover the underlying damage indicator bar. For the fill let's choose a style box flat and I'm gonna set the background color to this bluish green. Also let's scroll down to ordering and set the Z index to 1 to put this bar in front of the damage indicator bar. Let's add a child node to the health bar and it's also going to be a progress bar and name it damage bar. With the damage bar selected go up to the anchor preset button and choose the full rect option. You can see the damage bar expanding to fill the width and the height of its parent. Now let's go into the inspector and disable show percentage as well. Set the value to something higher than before, I'm gonna set it to 80 and again this is just so we can see the bars. And again under theme overrides and styles, let's choose a background style to be a new style box flat. Set the background color to a very dark gray, click on expand margins and let's set all margins to 1 pixel. Click on shadow and let's set the colors alpha value to 70 and the offset y to 1 pixel. For the fill style let's choose a style box flat. And for the background color we can choose a red or a white and I'm gonna go with the white. Down in ordering let's set the Z index to minus 1 and now we can see the white bar has been pushed behind the green one. Let's add a timer as a child of the health bar. In the inspector let's set the wait time to something low like 0.4 seconds. This is the time that it's gonna take the white bar to catch up with the width of the green bar. And you can experiment with this of course to adjust it to your liking. Also turn on one shot. Now let's add a script to the health bar. First let's get the timer and the damage bar from the scene. Declare a health variable and set it to zero. This health is something the scene holding the health bar is going to have to initialize itself and for that it's going to use an init health function with an underscore health parameter. We're gonna set health to underscore health, max value equals health, and value equals health. And same for the damage bar, damage bar dot max value equals health, and damage bar dot value equals health. So at this point both our bars would be completely full. Now let's add a setter to our health variable by writing colon set equals underscore set health. A setter is a function that is going to get called every time we try to change the health variable. And this is very useful for us because every time the health changes we also want to change something about our health bars. Let's implement the set health function with a parameter called new health. When we call something like health equals 3 what's gonna happen is set health is going to be called and new health is going to have the value 3. Define a var previous health and set it to current health. Set the health variable to a minimum between max value and new health and set the value to health. Now let's check if health is less than or equal to zero in which case we're just gonna queue free this health bar. We don't need it anymore. 
let's check if current health is less than previous health. If this is the case, we're talking about taking damage, and this is where we want to start our timer. Timer.start. At this point, the white bar, the damage bar underneath, is still at the previous size of the health bar, and it's only going to get reduced once the timer ends. Otherwise, we're talking about health increase or healing, and in this case, we can just call damage bar dot value equals health. So the damage bar immediately gets filled up to the size of the health bar. Now we can connect the timer's timeout signal by clicking on it, going into the node tab, double clicking timeout and clicking connect. We get a new function in our script called on timer timeout and in here we're just gonna write damage bar dot value equals health to make the damage bar catch up to the health bar. Now I'm gonna show you how to use this health bar in your scenes and for this example I have this ghost enemy scene. All I'm gonna do is add the health bar scene to it. And you can see it's a little bit big right now, but we can resize it very easily by dragging on these knobs here. And I'm gonna place it above the enemy's head. This is my ghost enemy script, and as I mentioned before, we have to set up a couple of things to make our health bar work. First of all, we'll get a reference to our health bar by writing on ready var health bar equals and getting it from the scene. Then in the ready function, you can see I set up my enemy's health here. And this is the perfect place for calling health bar dot init health and passing in the health to initialize the health of the health bar. Then I have the enemies set health function which gets called every time its health gets changed. And this is the perfect place for calling health bar dot health equals health to update the health bar's health so it matches the enemy's current health. I'm also going to show you how to make a boss health bar, which is a health bar that always stays on screen and doesn't follow the enemy. For this example, I have this big ghost scene here. I'm going to add a canvas layer node to it, and whichever node I put as a child of it is not going to move with the enemy scene, but will always stay in the same place on the screen. So this is why I'm adding the health bar to the canvas layer. And with the health bar selected, I'm going to click on the anchor preset button and select the center bottom option to put it at the bottom of the screen. And then I'll just pull it up a little bit. And just for fun, we can also add a label to our canvas layer and write in the name of our enemy. Place that right above the health bar. This is my big ghost script in which we're gonna do exactly the same as before to make our health bar work. First, get it from the scene. Then in the ready function where I set up the health, call health bar dot init health and pass in the health. And whenever the enemy's health changes, this is the set health function for me again. We're gonna call health bar dot health equals health. For more short form Godot tutorials, check out the playlist on screen. And thank you for watching.